Well, our referee just laying the ground rules down for the players here. Very warm welcome, everybody. It's day two in San Juan, the Medallia Light Re Puerto Rico Open, and it's deja vu all over again. I'm right beside my new friend, Tim DeRoyder, and Tim, uh, I feel like we, we're picking up right where we left off last night. Yep, very true. Very good matchup here with two excellent players. One of them is from the USA, Tyler Steyer. And he's facing against Alexa Pizzelje from Serbia. I hope I got that right. Well, I practiced that name many, many times. Well, I had to uh, ask one of our colleagues how to pronounce his name properly. I'm totally unfamiliar with Alexa, but uh, he's very well known on the Euro Tour. Got to the business end of a couple events over there. So Tyler Steyer. Yeah, possibly a favor on paper, but it's the old cliche, the game's not, pay, not played on paper. Well, I'm not sure actually if he's the favorite or not because um, both players have had quite equal results in the last couple events. So based on the last results, I, I, could, I think this could be a really good match. Well, let's hope so for our pool fans at home. I still, I've done four matches here and I still haven't seen a shootout, so. This could be one. This, this may be the best way to start day two. 44 countries represented here, 192 pros. So they have, they have come from all over. We've got events, women's event, junior event, and we're gonna cap it all off the last few days with the World 8-Ball Championships, the Predator World 8-Ball Championships. So it's all to come for, and it will be heating up as each day progresses. So he's choosing to push the six and the nine together. Didn't really tie them up. And just wondering. I think he, he will have to play this one ball as there's too many options to play. Might be able to spin around the eight and just leave, leave both balls on the long rail. Yeah, just like that. Behind the two would be perfect. Oh, beautifully oh, controlled hit that very cue good. ball. Beautifully controlled cue ball. So, not, sh not sure if he can hit one reel. Well, early indications. I mean, players have spent a little bit of time as we see Alexa playing this shot again. Spent a little time on the table just warming up, but boy, he's got the speed down pat. Great shot. Good hit, but first opportunity for Alexa. Still not easy though. He's only able to make the one ball in the bottom left corner in this view, but really not an easy way out for the cue ball to get on the two. Might have to try to find the gap in between the six and the nine and come back down for the two, which is very tough. And you can see the three at the top end as we look from our overhead camera. That's still a problem ball, not available to the corner pocket. Yeah, I really tried to bend that cue ball in between. There's not really much more. He does still have the cut on the two and a possible three seven combination but that's all easier said than done. Yeah, I think he tried exactly what you alluded to, Tim. Tried to find the cue ball between the nine and the six and just clip the nine. Still makeable. Just won't be able to get as close to the three as he might have liked. Yeah, maybe this was the better option because like I said, like three, two, three tough shots in a row. Why not just try to play a safety? Just would have liked to probably Get that two ball at least behind the 10. Hit that a little thin. And he might be able to make this too if he really wants to go aggressive. If not, he can possible bang the two, two rails away and get the cue ball behind the 10. Ooh, hit that a little thin, needs a two ball to have cover.
play going on all around the venue. So these players have to try and find that high level of focus and maintain it. The race to four, best two out of three sets. And if it goes 1-1, you get into a shootout. A little conservative safety from Alexa, but I believe he might be in trouble after this. There's a couple nice safety shots. Could bring the cue ball behind the five. Could also try to play with inside or roll up on the seven. I'm not really sure about this, but he was always going to give that one real okay. kick. Yeah, that's kind of a lazy man's attempt at a safety. Could have been a little bit more aggressive, I think, with that safety option. Well, he was always going to leave the one real kick over the left side, and now he also done it on the right side, which here there's a big chance of playing a good safety after. Look at the cue ball. I think it's a very good shot. What did he just leak out, the little edge? Might be just enough, just not enough. It's on the edge. Still, the three and the seven are pretty locked up, so he will have to play with low right and try to bump the three. Well, he's opened the three up, and in so doing, got the safety on the two, so very much this rack up in the balance now this two becomes a key ball yeah, and also blocking quite a lot of lines on the table right now not really a one rail or two rail so he will probably go well he's two going two rails here I was thinking about maybe going three rails now well, the first real opportunity to try and seize this first rack, fall into Steyer. Uh, still needs needs a good shot on this two ball. Will not be able to hold the cue ball, I think. Has a little too much angle, so we'll have to go maybe three rails around. Or one rail, but you see the cue ball still had a lot of speed, so... Now he's queuing over the eight. Yeah, these are the sort of shots you don't practice. This is all cue delivery fundamentals. Staying still. And it's called for an extension. This is a big shot, big moment in the first rack. Well, also the thing is, is that he needs the cue ball to, he needs to draw the cue ball back just around two balls. But because he's queuing over that eight, that will make the shot a lot tougher. Now, if he just rolls it in, he will need another good shot on the four to the five. So I'm happy he took his extension just to make sure what his plan was after. Well, steady back arm. He's decided to go below the four. So as you said, Tim, he's gonna be taking the cue ball, the bottom end of the table and good speed required to get back onto the five. But he delivered that cue very nicely over that. Early indications. He's very steady. Oh, and he tried to shoot it to the corner, and I'm very surprised as I think he could have went for the side and bring the cue ball just past the 10 and come back down. Oh, I thought that was gonna be in the plan because it certainly looked like that shot was available. The corner. I mean, obviously increased the degree of difficulty. He never did land on the five ideally. So either the cut here or the bank. He hit that good, so Alexis, second opportunity this game. This one is a little bit more realistic, a little easier than before. Both very stoic, similar styles. You'll see very little emotion from either of them.
Yeah, I chose to leave the six ball to the corner. I was thinking about maybe playing with left and getting to the center of the table for the six in the side and go around. But he must feel confident enough to take a little longer six ball. I know this young man has been traveling around a lot with uh, Eklund Kachi and Sanjin Pilivanovic the last couple months. So and has been playing all the events, so he's probably in that stroke too. That punch. Good speed here. Yeah, very nice shot. And looking pretty, pretty smooth too, like Nice little rhythm going on around the table. Well, you know, Tim, this is my first chance to see Alexa play, and I can see what you were saying now. I think yeah. I might be biting my tongue. He's, uh, he's definitely here to win this match. Well, he secures the opener. The miss from Tyler Steyer proving pivotal. And Pachalia, well, he didn't come here to shop. Puerto Rico is a beautiful, beautiful country, great city. We were in San Juan. I'm sure the shopping is nice, but I think he's planning the shopping spree after the event. He wants a little cash to take with him. A typical Serbian, too. That I mean, you just get very little emotion. You know, yeah. a lot of the European players over the years they have just raised the bar, come to America, and uh, a game that was once thought to be American-owned, no more. Yeah, that's no more. I'm not saying it's European-owned, but I'm pretty sure that it's all divided over the world right now. All the countries that didn't used to have any good players at all starting to pick up too. Like, everywhere you go, you'll find one or two good players, every country in the world probably at the moment. Which is fun, if you're ever on holiday in the Netherlands, hit me up. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a chance at the one-two combination here. and Not easy, it's a little distance between the one and the two, but the just, just defend, depends how aggressive he wants to be. Well, the good thing though, it, it comes with high reward. As If he makes the, the one-two combination, the one will probably travel a little bit towards the short rail. But the cue ball will come off the long rail also over there, so he will have a good shot on the one. You see, the one was always going to stay there. Just did not get to make the two. And Tyler just taps the table, let the referee know that he's going to be playing the two in that corner. Not quite as simple to maintain position on the one here. Got to be a little careful. It's a little tricky indeed. The one ball might travel over to the other corner. I will try to play that speed. I was thinking about maybe banking this one ball. He might be. Yeah, I, oh, I was gonna say, I did like this better though. Guaranteed to be on the two. He must have changed his mind. I saw him tap the corner and it looked <coughs> like he was gonna go at the two, but no, I, and you know what? In fairness, that's a bank he'd expect to get. And that might well cost him the rack. Oh, doesn't want the cue ball to end up on the long rail. But it did. Still okay, you can play with a lot of right and just spin the cue ball off the rail to the center of the table, that's okay. Oh, well, you went to go to rails and wasn't trying to <laughs> make the four as well, so could be in trouble if the five does not go in the bottom left corner, in the bottom right corner in this view, but. He's got, yeah. a little, got a little angle on the three though. He could, if he wanted to, he could try and drop below the five, get it to the side pocket. He's got that angle. As you said, just depends. Well, it looks like the five might go by the nine. Yeah, just the thing is if you're exactly straight on that, it's a lot, it's, it's an easy shot. You can definitely squeeze that by, but if, you're, if you need that little angle, now that aiming to be so precise is a lot tougher. I might I might just don't take the risk and take the five in the side. Just to make sure I don't have to deal with all the 
awkwardness. Oh, and he's a little in between. He looks confident about shooting this to the corner. Like I always say, if they're confident, then it must go. I believe their eyes. Oh, it's okay. Just the speed again. Like it, cue ball took off a little bit. Just 50 yard line on this six ball. making Tyler Steyer pay. That missed attempt on the bank. We thought it might be pivotal. Well, it looks like it's gonna be. And a pretty good start from Alexa. Pretty good start, just missed one mistake in the first rack, but eventually still won the game and... Yeah, more importantly, he's letting Tyler Steyer know that he's here and he is a player to contend with. And we're gonna be back with more action. Don't go away. Welcome back here at the Medalla Light Puerto Rico Open. Alexa Pizzelia is up 2-0 over Tyler Steyer. He's breaking in rack number three. Oh, that cue ball. Yeah, got the wing ball, Tim, but didn't control that cue ball nearly as well as he would have liked. If he kept it in the middle of the table as these players are always trying to achieve. He would have had a shot at the one, but he's just missed it that slightly. And I also think he does not have a shot on the one. He might be able to just see the inside of the one. And with inside, I mean the top side of the one. So he could be double banking the save, but he might be attacking here. What does he, what can he see on the one? How much? Well, he went for it. He definitely could make it. And now this is tricky because in the Pro Beard Series, we're playing Pro Beard Series rules, of course. So that means that early 10 balls are allowed. So if Tyler finds a way to call the 10 ball in any of the six pockets and makes it, okay. he will win this game. And he just called the 10 ball. As long as it's not on the break. It counts. But it's, just, it's just tough though. It's a really thin cut shot on the one and there's no carom. It's not enough room for the cue ball to go in between the one and the 10. He might have to just play safe. I don't like the combination on the 10 that much. Yeah, I think this was definitely the better shot, but Really needed that one ball to get behind the seven. And he will be in trouble after this. Or at least it's what I expect to happen. Yeah, that's... Well, Tyler's brought the short cue. So his mindset is such that well, he's oh. not using it. He's laying it just across the side of the table, but he's calling the corner pocket. 
Well, so I, do, I do like this a lot more just because you got five balls down table where you can get lucky behind. So if he makes a decent contact on the one and he did, you see there's a lot of good stuff that could happen and definitely worked out for him. It was a good choice. Yeah, straighten that cue ball up with a lot of left hand English. Good decision. Good execution from Tyler Steyer. He needs something good to happen. He hasn't exactly got off to a dream start. Well, sa same thing here, using the short rail because he's got, again, five balls to get lucky behind. Just needs a contact on the one, but he did not get to hit the one. So, first ball in hand opportunity this match for Tyler Steyer. And the first real opportunity to get that back arm going. He said that one miss was back in the opening rack. And of course that's not counting the bank shot on the one that he missed in the second that proved costly. But I think this is a pretty Pretty urgent visit, this one from Tyler Steyer, if he's gonna have any chance in this match. Well, especially this first set, because it only takes a couple mistakes, a couple small mistakes. Ooh, well, it still went in, but wiped its feet. It only takes a couple mistakes to lose that first set, and now the second set, you're playing to just get into a shootout to still be able to win the match, so. Like you can see, he got pretty straight on the four. Might have to settle down with a longer cut. Just trying to get close to the side pocket and take the cut on the five. He tried to go all the way to the other side of the five ball and I'll play good speed. Still a quite big cut. We'll have to just drop the five ball in with some left spin. Has to watch the cue ball though, doesn't want to overhit the cue ball. Oh, this is what I said. And that's exactly what I said. Like it was a real sensitive shot. And that cue ball tied up real bad on the 10 ball. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that couldn't have been a lot worse. So again, kicking two rails, hit the inside. Good, good hit. Very good hit from Tyler. At least got second prize, but definitely would have liked to get some rhythm going too. And I now I do like the the jump. The jump creates some separation. Could also choose to kick again two rails but this time I think it, it's easy to bring the cue ball back behind the 10. Being tall helps too. Just like that, trying to create distance. And I don't think he got there. Hit that a little bit too thin. Still, it's a long shot though. And like I said, Tyler did not really get the rhythm yet, like to really get in stroke. And he's elevating here. I think he may have to go over the edge of this 10 because we're right down the line. I don't quite think he can get through to it straight. Oh, and he did it too much. Well, he's left another tough cookie for Alexa. Yeah, like you said, he jumped a little bit too much over the edge of the 10.
so we might have to find a gap between the seven and the rail there. Might have been too focused on bumping the seven nicely that he's missed the six ball. Yeah, that was a tough shot. It was an open look, but very difficult. And this isn't easy either, even getting the six, but getting the cue ball around the angles for position back to the seven, not easy. He's got to miss that nine. Well, and there's a scratch. Oh, well, he's missed the nine, but is he going to end up behind the eight? Yeah, I think he did. Get that short cue out, Tyler. You know, it was extremely tough to play that four rail, so he actually did a really good job going on the other side of the nine to make sure he did never scratch. But then the speed was more difficult. This is a quite makeable jump, though. I wouldn't be too surprised if he makes this. Yeah, it's a good shot. Nice recovery. He just still doesn't look happy. Isn't that a lot of positive things happened to him in this match yet? He's going to have to try and pull this one out from the weeds. Still got work to do. Well, it's also, he's got a mini angle on this, but really has to still make that angle like he did. Like he did cheat the pocket and with a lot of left spin to make sure he got off that rail. And I've ma seen many people scratch on that, that they just, they messed into a straight angle and then drew the cue ball straight back. So he played a couple good shots in a row. Well, this was a much needed rack win for Tyler Steyer. A simple 10. And he gets his first beat on the scoreboard. Still 2-1 to Pachalia. Steyer will break in rack number four. And has to be feeling a little better. Yeah, still things are not really going his way, but it's nice to see that he's putting a real big grind on. Like he's really trying to choose the right shots. He's trying to, like I said, he could have jumped earlier and he chose to kick two rails, which was not easy at all. Like those are little things that show that he's really trying to find that little gear. His new wife in the back, just supporting him. He was there supporting her last night, Margaret Fefalova, and now Margaret Steyer. And she's one of the top lady players in the world. I'm betting that they'll have a pool table in their house. So interesting to see. Tyler always very known for his stumble break from the, mid, from the center of the table. But I've had many discussions with him about breaking in this format because he said, you know, it's just so tough to make the two balls going to the center. Like they go, but it's so tough. And he feels making the one on the break from the side is a lot easier. So, like I said, I called it. And, well, unfortunate result there, but at least he gets to stay at the table and work his way up to his next opportunity. Made the one ball straight in the side. Unfortunately, that two ball got bumped up table. Interesting to see what he does here. He's thinking about maybe pushing the five and the ten together, but that would could also mean a possible carom or combination shot on the ten. Which is always tricky to put. You never know what comes into play later. He's locked the five up. He's left a pretty simple reply for Pachalia though here. And I don't think he got the safety on this. But that nine ball might be covering just enough of that bucket for the two. He's going to roll up behind the nine, I think. If I look at where he's aiming in the cue ball, it doesn't look like he's going to stop his cue ball. So that means he's going for the safety. And like I said, 
now that push where he pushed the five and the ten together comes really into play because I think Alexa might be able to make the ten ball. Has to go real first. Maybe from the back of the two ball and then with the cue ball run into the five ten. Come from the back. Oh, he played the two ball first probably. And just a little bit too short. Quality safety exchange here though. Which one of them is gonna blink first? It's not like they both are having bad safeties. It's just you can really see that they're not tuned in yet. They're like a ball short every time. It's just speed. He hit that one really good. It's a good shot from Tyler Steyer. Yeah, you can. I like to go two rails on this with quite some speed, because if you just get that rail first just before that two ball, the cue ball will go past the four. If you go directly into it, you will probably run into the four, which you don't want to happen. Oh, he caught that real thin, and he's left it on. just made the 510 worse there is well there might be still a combination on but it's a lot lot more tough yeah I'm not was. sure it's set now I agree with you Tim I think he's made it a bit worse and it's gonna be pretty tricky for him to even get onto that side to look at the 510 I don't think that's available now so he might just be knocking this three in and then looking for the tall grass on the four Depends where he gets the cue ball. Well, you know what? He's got a nice angle on this. I wonder if he, if he wants to try and take this off two rails and dislodge these, because he's got the angle to do it. I'll have to spin the cue ball a little bit. Well, the only thing that's very risky, though, is he needs to watch his speed. Because if he hits that 10 ball quite full from this angle, then he's in trouble to stay behind the 10. So really needs to catch the edge of the 10. Yeah, he was specifically playing on doing that. Good attempt. Just one more look, just to confirm. He's got to be really careful, though, how he plays this, because he knows he's going to be knocking that 10 towards the corner pocket. Well, he might have to just bank the five ball to the other side of the table to at least not leave the ten ball over the bucket. He can also play it two way because if he hits it quite full, he's going to throw the ten ball more to the pocket. It's reverse spin because they're so close to each other. And then bring the cue ball all the way back up. But, oh, he played behind the nine. Nice little two way shot there. It's a strong shot. Yeah, real good shot. Well thought out, well executed and it should bear him some dividends. Good shot from Tyler Steyer there. Well, he's called the six. Yeah, possible carom. If he places with a lot of speed, it might really get knocked off the five ball and run straight into the six. Is he called the eight now? I think he might have changed his mind. I think calling the eight would be a higher percentage to like the, the chance to get lucky is higher, but I would still play this with a lot of speed. Not really a lot of good things that can happen here. Would like to catch the right side. Hit the left side and oh, what's happening with that five? Oh, he's got fortunate. Like I said, the five ball was always going to go into the open and really needed some luck there.
Not Tyler's best shot. Tried to slow roll that, just caught it a little too thin. Didn't have a lot of options, in fairness, Tim. He was in a bit of trouble. Yeah, and here he only needs to make the five, not really much more. Caught that a little wide, but like I said, it was just a matter of making the five ball and he should be okay from here. Good speed, nicely played. He certainly seems to have taken to the conditions here a little quicker than Tyler Steyer has. Well, that's the reason he's staring a 3-1 lead right in the face. Probably playing two rails here, just landing the cue ball on that second cushion in between the nine in the pocket. Not decided to hold the cue ball a little bit more. Oh, and this is to go on the hill in the first set. Alexa Pizzelia goes up 3 to 1 over Tyler Steyer and we'll go to a short break. Stay tuned guys. Welcome back to the Grand Ballroom here in the Convention Center, San Juan, Puerto Rico. The city's welcomed 192 players from 44 countries. We're showcasing the men's division this morning, day two. 128 men, full field, playing for 100 grand and 25,000 to the eventual winner. And the focus Today for us, myself, Tim DeRoyter, and Jim Weich bringing you all the action. Well, Tyler Steyer from the USA, Alexa Pachalia from Serbia. And it's Pachalia that's dictated proceedings so far, Tim. But a good opportunity for Tyler here. F quite easy one ball to start with, with the two ball nearby, which usually causes a little rhythm going on. Not really a tough layout. He's playing it simple, didn't really want to get closer on the three, just took the, the, grand, the guaranteed angle on the three and just traveling from the six to the seven might be the most tricky part in this game. Tyler knows he can't afford any more mistakes. He's got the controls in his hand now. Trying to get out in this rack, get back to 3-2, he'll be breaking. You know what I find as difficult as anything, when you come to a, a beautiful city like San Juan where the temperature's in the mid 80s, blue sky, sunshine, and you've got to come inside and play pool. I mean, that beach might look pretty inviting. 
Yeah, well, it's all about priorities, right? <laughs> Great holiday spot, though. He's going two rails forward. Oh, that took off a little bit. I was going to say that... And I'm also surprised that he's playing two rails because I probably would have liked to stun the cue off the rail and take the other angle from the other side. Especially because this way, going two rails, that nine ball comes into play. So, quite interested why. Decided to play really short around the angles and leave a more cut on the seven. Like I said, more cut on the seven. The cue ball took off again. Now we will see how comfortable he's feeling. Bridging over the ten. We've well, seen a lot of shots like this. With the cue ball near the cushion though, a little bit easier. Easier to steady that bridge hand and elevate over the ten. Yeah, I still favor him to make this, but we've seen different on that a couple times. Well, and this, again, came up a little in between. It's exactly in the middle. You can choose either pocket. You can shoot it. I like to shoot it to the right pocket, the, the top left corner in this view, and stun the cue ball. A lot of other players like to just soft roll it in in the left top corner. I think he will be going to the right side. Well, it was a vital rack for Tyler. Yeah, he needs this to stay alive in this opening set. And that's the music he's playing. 3-2, he still trails. He'll break in the next. And he'd like to see an instant replay of that rack. You've enjoyed yourself here, Tim. Sampled some of the fine dining. Actually, I didn't do the fine Puerto Rican dining, but I went to some local you know, bar, restaurant. Like It's not a restaurant, but like small bars where they had like Puerto Rican snacks and stuff and had some empanadas and yeah, pretty cool. It's, I d I'm definitely, I like the exotic weather a lot. So oh, I like to just be outside What's not to like about it? Our, uh, our, our colleague, Tony Robles, is, uh, is actually playing in the event, and he's helping us out with the commentary as well. And he was born here. So he's, uh, he's been directing traffic somewhat for a lot of us, telling us what to order, where to go, what we should be doing here in San Juan. Nice to have a tour guide. Yeah, yeah it's uh, very useful. The first couple days I didn't have Tony, so I was... Uh, Actually, just asking people I met here, I go like, oh, hey, where do you think I should be going? And made a couple friends already. Nice, open, welcome people here. Oh, nice square hit and almost made a two. I feel he took a little power off that break. Like, I feel he didn't hit it that with that much effort as he did before. I see all those balls all tracking towards pockets and not one of them finding any. I almost feel like Tyler has to, has to think he was a bit unlucky not to have seen anything go down. You and Alexa really tried to cheat the pocket there and Might have left Tyler with a nice shot on this. Still tough to get on the two. Even if he goes around the four, he really needs a nice bump on the eight ball, I think. No, in between the eight and the six. Needs to hit it thick and go three rails around all the balls. Well, he, he caught it thin and lucky bump, but okay. He got there. I was for a second. He got me scared. I thought he was gonna end up behind the nine. 
but he's got there and still not not an easy layout at all needs to make sure he's, he gets enough angle on the three so he might go stun right and bring the cube all the way down to the temple And this is key shot here if he can get on the four. Everything's opened up, but this is difficult. And he had to play it in a way he couldn't get close to the four. There's been one aspect of Tyler's game that's been a little shaky for me. It's his positional play. He's lost that cue ball a number of times. Yeah, he seems that he doesn't really get a hold of the speed so far of the table. Like you see every time, like, if you like to stay close to your next shot, like two or three diamonds away, and he's always that one more diamond away, which makes it just tough. Like, he's really trying, you can really look, if you look at him, you can see that he's trying to hang in there and grind his way through these shots all the time, but it just makes your day a lot tougher. It's a good strike on the five ball, though. Yeah, he keeps potting himself back into position. He's made some good shots in this rack, most of them from long distance. Huge game here. It's just to go hill hill. Both players missed some opportunities. Tyler missed, I think two. Or th yeah, I think two in the beginning of this set, and now Alexa is returning the favor in the ending of this set. So this was made to go hill hill. Well, not knowing a lot about Pachalia when the match started, you quickly let me know that Tyler was in for a battle. And a battle it's been. Hill, hill it is. So we are being treated. First match of the day. And first set of the day. We'll be down to one rack. Yeah, curious to see what he's about to do on the break. Like I said before, I had this discussion many times with Tony Robles, just about like, I'd rather crush the break, break as hard as I can to at least make a ball and stay at the table and have the cue ball go 300 rails around the table and just end up somewhere crazy, but still be at the table. Then trying to have a perfect cue ball and come up dry. Like you really gotta risk it, especially in this format, like hand, hand wrecking the balls, you really gotta give it your all to make a ball on the break. You cannot just just do your 70% break. Yeah, personal preference, I think, Tim. I mean, Tyler's got a big break. I think he could probably err on the side of control a little more. He's got plenty of power already. But this is a big break for him, big moment. I just wanna see him crush the break. See, it didn't really look like he was putting that much effort into it, and needs to be lucky, and... Yeah, he hasn't been lucky at all. He's having a look to see where the three is. Don't think the three passes the nine into the side, but he has left Pachalia a golden opportunity, one and two, right near pockets. So having a look at that three already, possible three nine billiard. So there's there's a few options for him, but he's in control of the table right now. Well, still he's got the one and the two over the hole, and that three ball is really tough. Also the carom, the carom is still 
if he shoots the carom, the three ball is going to be very wild. So, tough to judge this. He's got a chance to take control of the rock, though. I think that's key. Yeah, that's the main thing. Like, he might be able to just make the one and the two and then play a good safety on the three. And I'm sure he was definitely not trying to get there with the cue ball. Like, he either would have liked to be on the short rail or the long rail to get back down for I'll, a three. I'll tell you something else I guarantee. He didn't want to have to use the rake for this shot. <laughs> yeah, and the bridge is not the, your average pool player's favorite thing. That's just made the degree of difficulty that much harder. He might have to take the gamble and run into the 3-9. Well, he's back. He's back in the area that I thought he may be able to play the billiard and try and go at that nine, just a fine clip okay. on the three. Well, he might just roll up on the nine, just push the three along the long rail and leave Tyler behind the nine ball. If, is that just enough? Might have left a mini edge of the three the good thing though is if he hits that three, it's really tough to still avoid the five. So he might still have to kick this ball. And I think that's what Tyler is looking for. I don't think there's a high reward going over the right side of the three. Yeah, calling for an extension. These are big visits now. Everything under the magnifying glass. These are the moments you're going to remember. Yeah, this can be very costly. So he's kicking over the right short rail. He's kicking it very short and then with a lot of left spin to increase the chance of hitting the three and not having the five ball into play. Oh, and he overspun the cue ball. Yeah, he was quite surprised to see that, me too. He really put too much spin on that, even though he was aiming more to the left on the short rail. And that can be a very costly mistake. Good cue ball, nice control. Just needs to make sure you need to get some nice angle on the five. I like just going to the center of the table for the five ball. Just left spin. Some kind of way not feeling very comfortable on this shot. Playing with right. Still left himself a good angle on the five. Needs to bear down on this. Going two rails. It's his key shot. Oh, you see, and he took a little, little stroke off that. He didn't really accelerate on that shot. And this is a tough shot, even though you just gotta make it. The cue ball will always be fine, but just you're stuck on the rail. You don't wanna have that pokey cue action. You really gotta make sure you have a good follow through on this. Ooh, that did wipe its feet. He's okay for now. Now I'm wondering, he's left himself a little cut on the seven. Is he going to bump that nine ball to the long rail? Or is he still able to leave it just okay to where you can still shoot it in the side after? Like I said, it would make things a lot more difficult if he had pushed it all the way through to the long rail. You can play this with top left or top right. I like top left Yeah, to go to this side of the nine ball. 
perfect. Play that well, good speed. Well, this 10 to seal the deal in the opening set. Well, I'm surprised to see he also did not really do more to get on the 10. Like he could have drew, draw the cue ball back a little bit more. But he takes the 10 ball on the rail. Yeah, right into the throat of the pocket. A good clearance from Pachalia there. And he does secure set number one, four, three. There'll be a lot more action coming your way. You won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the Medaya Light Puerto Rico Open. Here we have Alexa Pizzelia from Serbia in his chair. He's quietly waiting for Tyler Steyer to return from his break as Tyler just lost his first set 4-3 to the young Serbian. Pretty, pretty even first set in my opinion. I think both players missed yeah, the same kind of mistakes. They both missed a couple balls, both didn't really get the cue ball where they wanted to. But in the end, the young Serbian prevailed. Yeah, he held his nerve well in that last rack to clear up. You know, got the mistake from Tyler. His missed escape. And that was all he needed, that one opportunity. He's a good player. Yeah, and this is the venue for this week. Awesome venue so far. Thanks to our sponsors, of course. We'd like to thank our sponsors and partners for this event, which are Medaya Light, Rums of Puerto Rico, Discover Puerto Rico, Predator Qs, Q Sports International, and our US Pro Beard Series partners are Seabirds Beard Supplies, Gamui, Alpha Coin Cryptocurrency, Jam Up Apparel, and Fargo Rate. Thank you all, and make sure you check out our sponsors. They might have something for you. So let's go back. As Alexa started off the first set, Tyler had the break in the second set and came up dry. And a tough, tough opener for Alexa, being on the rail, straight on the one, and cannot really hit the cue ball, needs to soft float it in. Good start. He's left himself okay on the two, three on the same side of the table, so doesn't really need to do much with the white. 
Yeah, won't be able to strike in the right side of the cue ball just because of the A. But might be able to just cheat the pocket a little bit on the two and just play a stop shot. Well, he's going forward. He's going probably to. Well, he's looking at going forward two rails. I think I like to just cheat the pocket, make the two on the left side of the corner pocket, and then playing the stop shot so the cue ball will move a little bit to the long rail. Or just drop it in. So he's left himself a little longer. All these good young players, though, distance really doesn't bother them. Young eyes. Young nerves. <laughs> It's a good shot though, the speed was the most important thing. Could have easily ended up behind the five. It's yeah. a good strike. Cued that one real nice. Smooth, as you said, good speed. Made it look easy. Yeah, so now it's done with a little left. Needs to get to the other side of the five ball. He did poke that a little bit, it was a little short backswing. But I think he's just got enough speed on the cue ball to be able to stun the cue ball over for the six. Yeah, he's very cue ball conscious now. Wasn't really doing the same things in the first set. Now he's really pointing on the cloth where he wants to have the cue ball. So something changed in his routine throughout the match. Uh, much like he started out the first rack in the opening set. Didn't need much of a chance. But looks very solid, very composed. Making the game look a lot easier than it really is. Yeah, and this was a really tough, tough run out. Was well, not easy to do. Had some really good positional play during this rack. Yeah, very negative body language from Tyler Steyer. Slumped down in his chair. Alexa, by contrast, he's got the bit between his teeth. He'll break in the second rack. Yeah, like I said, Alexa is also one of the players that are not so known on the, on the, like, in, in the pool world. Like, if he goes along the USA, a lot of people will not recognize him at all, even though he's had crazy good results in the Euro Tour. And I think he finished in the final maybe once or twice in the Euro Tour. So that means, like, a lot of players have never done that. So that means this guy can really play and should not be underestimated. Well, if he graces our screens a little more often, he's not going to be flying under the radar for too long. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure about that. So might be able to bang the one ball over two rails towards the 10. Yeah, calling it in the side and then bring the cue ball over to the four, behind the four. Tough sensitive shot though. Oh, he was trying to, he changed his mind and played it the other way. Played a good one ball though, but that cue ball was still not 
to where he wanted to. So we might see Tyler here with the kick and stick, playing with low right, hitting the one ball full in the face, going rail first full in the face, banking the one ball over one rail, and leaving the cue ball with the five. Just like that, he hit that super sweet. Again, that's one of those shots that look so super easy and it's not. Here we might have, there might be a 110 carom. Two rails into the one. He might go a little low on the 10. He's called the 10. So he sees it just the way you do, Tim. Oh, well, we'll, we'll have to hit this with a lot of speed though if, he try, if he's gonna try to make it. Right now, Tyler not even sitting down. He's got the best view in the house of how Pichali is going to be going at this one. But if he catches the bottom end of that one, he is going to be caroming into that 10. Well, did get a good hit on the one, but no result. And definitely hitting the left side of the one in this was a big sellout. This side was most likely to leave Tyler a shot. But it was tough to get to the other side. Like it's it's not always easy. It's easier said than done. And a wide open layout here for Tyler. Maybe going from the five to the six could cause a little trouble. So now got pretty straight on the five. Not sure if he can draw the cue ball back just perfectly to find the gap between the seven or eight, or he might roll forward to shoot the six in the side. I like that better. Just want stay away from the rail. Could make things a lot more difficult. Both players look like taking their chance as well in the second set. Tyler with certainly more international experience than Alexa. So left himself a little more angle in the eight than he probably wanted to, but has two shots, can go either low left, three rails, or low right. I think he would like to play low right. Could also play stun right and go long rail, short rail, and then come straight to the nine ball. But I fancied him to play this. He usually likes these strokes. Level the score. Good confident visit that one from Tyler Steyer. And as you said, Tim, levels it at one rack apiece. The second set here on day two. We're focusing on the men. But there is play all around this beautiful venue. We've got juniors in action. That'll be coming up a little later. The women are playing. And 64 women playing for $100,000 in prize money. Well worth the trip to San Juan. 
besides San Juan itself. Besides San Juan <laughs> itself. Yeah, we've been spoiled already for a couple of days. The weather has been really nice to everyone, and seems like everybody's having a good time. So that's well, I, Tim. I was telling everyone I'm from Toronto, and uh, we got about 10 centimeters of snow yesterday. <laughs> I'm taking pictures of the blue sky and the sun here and sending it all back home. Eat your heart out, guys. Rack number three, one, one, the score. Like I was looking for him to do something similar like this, like a lot more crush on the break. And he hit that pretty good, making the one inside. Yeah, just looking at an area that he can push to. Oh. A little bit more power. Keeping that cue ball under control. So kicked. Well, is thinking about kicking the two. Possible making the two of the five. Yeah, if you're going to think this long, you really got to turn it back. Well, at the all, oh, there was some rec reconsideration. There's a couple things he can do. It's just very sensitive shot he can either make the two real first to make it he can have this but if this happened you needed a good speed and that just worked out for him but he caught a little roll there actually because he should have never really got that far with the two if he hit it that full yeah this is ugly Tyler looks at that and just shakes his head And using his extension. Well, he's calling the two. He's kicking at this. Yeah, might be the only way bringing the two ball back where it was before. Just like that, and he called it in the corner, so that was a super shot. The shot of the match so far. Watch it again. Call the two into the bottom right corner. And then watched it obey his command. Well still it just it to a lot of people that shot would look like he just kicked the ball in. But even though it would not have dropped, it would always have have been behind the 10 or the 5. So that was an excellent shot and could be a very important shot too if he runs this out. He's on the hill. Nicely on the five, just stun off the cushion, play the six to the same pocket. I always look for unforced movement just to give me an indication that the player's feeling the pressure and Tyler's looking pretty still right now, pretty steady. Oh, that's, that's inexcusable. Tim, there's just no excuse for that mistake. He had so much room to work there. And as confident and as collected as he looked. Well, he will be kicking himself after too, in, in, unless he does something really great on, the, on this shot, but. 
I had no words. Kicking three rails and just missed it, leaving Alexa a very good opportunity here. Yeah, I'm not sure what sort of thoughts will be going through Tyler Steyer's mind right now after that. I mean, that he had that rack by the throat. Just a horrible positional shot. And also the way how he called the seven ball after, like I think now he, he, he looks pretty disappointed in himself too, Tyler, which is understandable but he should wear it off and try to stay in it like he's been doing all match. So it came up a little short in this nine, so we'll probably go four rails. Just like that. Very nicely played from Alexa there. And this one's gonna sting. Well, it usually just takes a, one mistake like that to make a big, big gap. It could cost him two games, maybe three. No, that for certain. But Pacelli had taken a little break. And with it, we will take a little break as well. So we'll be back with all the action. Welcome back to the Medalla Puerto Rico Open. Day two here. We're here with a matchup between Tyler Steyer and Alexa Pizzelia. Tyler lost the first set, four to three, to the young Serbian, and is trailing now two to one in the second set. Really needs to step up his game a little bit. Has been making quite some positional errors. Yeah, that's been the. Uh the cause of his issues, no question about it. I mean, he's been in position where he looked like the, f the racks were gonna fly his way and just unforced errors, losing that cue ball. And, and simple shots really too, Tim. You know, this, uh, this Puerto Rico Open, the last stop on the Predator Pro Billiard Series, it's really, it's been quite an event, as nice as any venue I've ever seen. My first trip to Puerto Rico, and I'm betting it's not gonna be my last. Yeah, they're 
planning on doing a lot more events, US Pro Bowler Series and just Pro Bowler Series in general. Like they have the US Pro Bowler Series, of course, the couple events in the USA, but there's all they're also planning on doing a couple more in the Europe. So a lot more events are gonna come on the calendar and I mean, if they show up every time like this, I think all the pool players will be very happy. So, both players got back to the arena. Just waiting for Alexa to get ready to break the balls in rack number four. Break it from the side. Really needs to crush the break a little bit more. Give everything. Okay, I like the way how he hit that, making the seven. Just a little unfortunate bump on the cue ball. Yeah, no clean look to the one here, but as you said, plenty of power. It's a seven in the side pocket. But it looks like it's just gonna be a push out for Alexa here. Yeah, might have to push to a jump if he favors himself jumping, of course. I am not too familiar with his jumping skills. But if he makes the jump, he's guaranteed on the two. And you know, well, Would you believe he may even be jumping here? From this position, it would be extremely tough. Even though it's not the full nine ball he has to jump over, that does make it easier, but... Ooh, got pretty close and oh, he's left a chance for Tyler. Everything's in the open here for Steyer as well. Big opportunity. Put to rest those demons from the last rack. You know, there's so many talented young players around the world right now, and really all that separates them is what's above the shoulders. You know, preparation, dedication, but just that mental toughness that you need to be able to compete at this level. Oh, it did get a little far on the three ball. Tough to reach. We'll have to bring a very long extension like you just seen in the screen, either that or using the bridge. But most of the Amer American players in general, they really do not like the bridge at all. Like they really try, try to stay away from it. And I'm not sure if that's because the bar tables or just in general, but you see he's using a very different technique with the bridge, using it as a regular cue, just so he feels like he can draw the cue ball a little bit better, and well, he might have over overdone that a little bit too much. Very different, different yeah, style. That, uh, <laughs> I'm sitting back in my chair looking at that. I, I mean, he actually struck that one real well. So you he know. might be able to just go short, just in front of the 10, going three rails around. It's a lot of spin too. Yeah, played it real short, that's nice. Good cue ball. Yeah, well hit inside the six, took the six out of play. Couldn't really have hit that one any better. I'm still thinking about the shot he played, you know, wedging that, that bridge on his shoulder. Might have shown a few players something there. They could all take a lesson, I think, from Alex Pegulayan. Alex is uh, very handy on a snooker table and probably one of the best rake players you're gonna see. Yeah, that's also one of the things, like there's a lot of pool players here that have played snooker in the past from Europe. And while well, they're all pretty known for at least like using the bridge or like drawing the cue ball a little bit, like they can move around with the bridge. Of course, they're not run-out players with the bridge, but they know their way around it, which is such a big deal. 
And again, Tyler did not get to that position where he just gets those comfortable runouts. Yeah, it's the positional play that's really been a the struggle. Biggest, yeah, the yeah. biggest issue for Tyler in this match. He's he's knocked in some good balls, but he's just lost that cue ball. And at times when it didn't look like it was that difficult. Yeah, and Alexa, the only, he's got two kick, two lines. Oh, what is he looking at here? Okay. He can either kick it one rail over the right side, but there's a big scratch. Well, this has got to be three cushions. Or playing it far on the short rail with low left, but he's playing three rails, and well, all the pace will be out of the cue ball when it gets to the eight, so I was going to say, I don't really see that contact. much good stuff to be able to happen. Well, he missed that one by a foot. But he hit it with way too much spin. Yeah. The spin really got him there. So just two stop shots for two each second set. Well, not two stop shots, but at least one. And two each it is. Tyler Steyer. Alexa Pachalia. Steyer trying to force the shootout. He needs to win this set. And I will get to see my first shootout of the Puerto Rican Open. Yeah, Alexa. Actually, he was pretty, he looked really disappointed when he missed that, that three railer just now. Even though he was actually quite fortunate to be at the table at that point. So, and it was it was very tough. If he had hit the eight, the chance to get it re-safe somewhere on the table was extremely tough too. So, hopefully it doesn't really affect him that much. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, he, yeah, I, let's say he starts down talking himself in the chair. Like, oh, I should have hit that. And Well, Timmy did. He went back to the chair and he was having a little conversation with himself. And I mean, we see it all the time. You know, player will go back and almost mystified by what he's seen, but he just hit that cue ball with a lot of unforced spin, and he's got to put that out of his mind. There's still a lot of pool left to be played in this one. And again, nice big break on the one ball. Going straight in the side, and he's got a shot on the two. You see it. I was hoping for him to break like this at, at the beginning of the match. So, and it's working. It's good to see. Just wrong side on the two, three at the opposite end of the table. So we'll see what Tyler can manufacture here if he wants to try and pump this one into that side pocket and spin the cue ball all around the angles. Oh, he miscued. Well, he was trying to pump it in and spin the cue ball around the angles. Trying to draw to the bottom cushion, the right hand cushion with a lot of left hand spin. Get that cue ball up for the three. But right now the option falls to Alexa. And believe it or not, this is, actually it looks very tough. I think this is a, shot you have to take you don't have to do anything with the cue ball just cut the three and go two rails up and down oh he 
elected to play the safety and that's a good shot too just does not want to leak out that little edge but it's a very strong shot i think he's got fully blocked by the four and that nine ball comes into play as well so you can kick from the back tyler's got the short cue so he'll be jumping over that four well, I was looking, he might be able to bank the three ball into the 10. Or even the cue ball low with the nine and the seven. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> it's tough though, because if you look at how the balls are spread, they're all around the rail. So there's a big free sp open space in the center of the table. So it's so easy to yeah, leave that ball in the center of the table in some kind of way. Oh, and... Oh, he might not like what's coming next. It depends, though. He doesn't have to shoot the three, but because of the six and the eight, he might have to choose for a 3-10 combo. He's going to look at it. Rest assured. I mean, with that 10 so close to that corner pocket, it's very inviting. And it's just that that six ball is really tough to get on the six and then also to get from the six to the seven. I think this is the right shot to play. And this would get him on the rail, uh, on the rail on the hill first, sorry. Oh, and it goes in, so. Costly, costly mistake from Tyler. Needed to make contact on that jump. Another look at it. <laughs> he's saying the moment the referee called the 10 seconds, like he said 10, and then Alexa didn't mean if the referee nominated the 10 ball or the 10 seconds. <laughs> he said, well, wh what do I do here? <laughs> that was funny. Well, Alexa with a chance to avoid a shootout. He'll be breaking. Three, two, that's the lead. Yeah, again, it's a little, like it was a tough jump for Tyler, but to also leave the 10 ball easier in front of that corner pocket, like things are not coming along really, really well for him, I feel. So last break was pretty successful. Had a pretty powerful break. Would like to see one more like that. Did overcut the one ball a little bit and causes a lot of balls not to move. Presses half of the balls to one side most of the time. Yeah, using the same break that Tyler uses just from the other side of the table, trying to get that one in the side and came up dry. Everything on left hand side of the table but possibility of a bank here for Tyler and it would avail position to the two no he's playing the two ball probably Karim the two oh he played a one ball two reels oh and that really just because of the way how he played it, it didn't really open up on that second rail. And, oh, that was, was so you see it, if you play it a little bit too firm, when it hits that second rail, it still has the yeah. spin from the other side. So he was opening up on the first rail, then it closes down on the second one. So you really need a good speed on that one. It was really sensitive. And this is the opportunity for Alexa to seal the deal. Yeah, it's not an easy table though, Tim. I mean, looking at the lay of the land here, the four is tricky. Oh, well, you might be choosing to go for a four ten combination or maybe a carom. Got a little short on the three. Now put, has to probably put his bridge hand in between the four and the five. And that's where usually the mistakes come from, you know, the long bridge or... Oh, he can still reach in between. Okay, that's okay. 
Still, where is he going to play the cue ball? Yeah. Close extension. This this looks a little tricky for me. I mean, it's tough to tell the angle, but it looks like that cue ball, if he's playing the three to the bottom left corner as we look, the cue ball is going to be going off two cushions, and he's got to get it below the four. Well, he might play with a lot of right spin and go for the four in the top side bucket. This, but then a lot harder. Needs more speed. And he's hooked himself. I was expecting the same line, but then just a lot more speed. Yeah, it was on that line where speed was everything. So he called a four ball in the corner and just thinking about all the options that could happen. Doesn't want to hit it too firm. I like the way how he struck that, but oh, and this might be lining up. Oh, I'm sure he's calling the 10 ball, he just did. But he's quite off angle. Yeah, quite disappointed Alexa right now. Eyeing up that 10 again, four onto the 10. Almost that imaginary pocket just to the left of where he wants the 10 to follow. This would get it to Hill Hill with Tyler breaking. Oh, what a shot. And desperately needed it. Well, yeah. There's only, only Tyler's relative applauding there. The one in attendance, but that was a great shot. That was, uh, that had to be made, that combination. And what a time for it, 3-3. Three, three. The first set ended 4-3 in favor of Alexa. Well, Tyler's breaking here, and he broke in the seventh rack in the opening set, dry. So let's see if this one proves to be a little different. He needs this to try and force a shootout. And I can't tell you how badly I want to see one of those shootouts, Tim. Oh, you might have one here. Expecting to see quite powerful break on this. Needs to make a ball on the break. Big, big hit. But then again, he also hit the other side of the one. Like he hit it on the right side. So he was back cutting the one. See, just aiming was not the best. And almost still made a six. It's left the opportunity for Alexa. Alexa that is look, trying to cheat the pocket here. Playing at pocket speed and trying to slide it along the rail. He's done, he's tried this once before but then hung the one ball so. He's done well here. Hang nice on the two. Maybe a little bit too much angle. But at least he's close to the two, so he, it's easier to work with. Like he could play easier up and down two rails or maybe run into the nine ball. This is a nervy shot though. If he can get perfect on the three, the whole rack opened up. Still another tester. It is, but he knows if he gets the three, cue ball's tracking right over to where he needs to be for the four, so he can just focus on this. Yeah, and especially if he plays his pocket speed, just like now, stay in line.
but there might be some nerves though because he already had the opportunity earlier to close the match so and the more mistakes they usually have to finish the match the more the pressure gets them at the end too so exactly right you know you feel it a little bit more like you said he's in prime position right now he'll be able to put all those to bed well he's got too straight yeah he's disappointed <laughs> And I understand why, because either way, if he ended up on the left side or the right side, he would have been okay. And Tyler looking on, wondering if he's played his last shot in this match. Yeah, it's going to draw the cue ball back to the center of the table, just probably leaving a longer seven ball. Again, straight on the seven, but not much to do on this eight. Uh, on the eight after, if he stops the cue ball there, and he struck that one nice. Full value though. Pachalia has been just marginally better. He's taken his chances. So I guess your shootout aspirations have to wait a little longer, Jim. Yeah, I'll just have to I'll have to grab something to eat and just wonder what could have been. <laughs> Yeah, just the stem ball, and it goes in. Well, a good win for Alexa Pachali over Tyler Steyer. Both sets 4-3, but he stays in the winner's bracket. A sound win for the Serbian star. There'll be more action coming your way from the Puerto Rico Open. Men's, women's, stay with us. Yeah, our next match will be at 12 p.m. This was Jim White and myself, Tim De Ruyter. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you at 12. Thank you.